All righty. It's saying I'm streaming live. Hello, hello. Travel MLM business owners. Oh my gosh. Today is your day because I am going to spend some time with you talking about how to build your travel business like a pro. So you will never hear a no ever again in your business when you're ready to uh, share your offer with people, right? Now, um, let's start first things first. And I hope that my fan is not making too much noise, but child, I need the fan. It's hot in here. Well, it's not hot, hot, but I just need the fan, child. And, <laughs> and um, I'm drinking some tea, trying to do a gazillion things at one time. So there you go. Um, all right, so let's do this. I the thing about the travel industry is that this really intrigues me personally. I one of the first companies that I joined when I discovered the world of network marketing was a travel company. I am not in travel now, but I've had the experience uh not only being in it myself, but also um uh coaching so many, so many travel uh agents, travel uh, marketers, right? So let me take a sip of this, hold on. Child, this is some kind of ginger something that I added some high-end pepper to. I probably should add some lemon to it too. Mm. This better help with this belly fat, that's all I need. <laughs> and yes, I've been working out too. And no, I don't need any MLM products. <laughs> But anyway, um, it really intrigued me because of, you know, just how network marketing is done. You know what I mean? Like you are, those, some, some companies' presentations really do grab you and you're sold on this idea. You're sold on this dream that, oh my gosh, I can actually make my dreams come true. I can actually create a business where I have the kind of freedom I've always wanted, never thought was possible because I just thought, you know, this was life. I thought that I would have to get up, go to work, be gone for eight hours or more every day, five to six days out of my seven day week. And that's just how it is. But then you see, oh my gosh, here's this cool world and I can totally create whatever I want. At least that was my experience with it. Now, when it comes to travel, this is a little bit, um, a little bit unique when we're when we're talking about well i don't know i don't know i feel like it's a little bit unique because travel is everywhere um yes many many people travel um but what i don't like is when you know the uplines say stuff like oh um oh let me make sure you guys can hear me yes many many people travel Okay, just making sure. So, um, you know, when travel agents say, uh, um, uh, travel uplines say, oh, uh, everybody travels, therefore everybody's a prospect. You know what I mean? Like, stop doing that. Stop doing that. Because just like I used with the shoe um, analogy the other day, you know, if, uh, you know, if I sold shoes as a network marketing company, and I only sold a specific brand, right? Like, let's say I only sold Louboutins. I can't go around saying, well, everybody's got feet, therefore everybody can buy my shoes. They could buy my shoes, but do they want my shoes, right? Because people have preferences. So some people only wear athletic wear. Maybe they're more of the hip hop style and they don't do the street hip hop style. So they don't do a lot of dressing up, right? Or maybe they love cowboy boots. Maybe they're from like Texas or Arizona or something. They really love cowboy boots and that's all they wear. Cause by the way, cowboy boots are very comfortable. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, I can't go around saying that and same thing for travel. Now, one thing that's really cool about travel is, you know, it really is so beneficial. It will help people save money. Travel is an experience that you're selling. It's not a product. Right. So that's a little bit different than the health and wellness industry, because you're offering something that um, really the. Whether it was a deal or it was a scam, <laughs> all depends on the person who went through the experience with you. And so, yes, all of us as network marketers have to learn. And this is why I also teach that you have to give your prospects, really everybody in that six step process 
you have to give them a good experience with you. Because if you don't, that's on you. And now you have tarnished your reputation. You have tarnished that friendship. You have damaged the trust. And it is really hard, if not impossible, to get it back. And so when it comes to travel, I know some people, you know, that you may go and try to prospect will say things to you like, well, I mean, why can't I just go to like Priceline.com or Expedia? Um, Because they give me deals, right? And you're like, ah, geez, why won't they just listen to me? I'm trying to give them a really good deal, you know? So I get that. Um, Give me one sec. Give me one sec. This is what I get for being right. Okay. Sorry about that. (laughs) But, um, oh, let me get comfy again. We're about to hang out. We're about to chill. Do I have my fan around? Oh, child. Yes, I do. Boom. Okay. So, so when it comes to travel, I know for some, it can feel kind of discouraging that, you know, there's so much competition out there. However, I want, I want to teach you, you know, something, I want to share something with you that I feel could totally help you out. And that is, you know, when you're dealing with travel or honestly, any other industry, you know, you're not in a market that is oversaturated. I know that travel is a trill, multi-trillion dollar industry. I know that's one of the lines that your uplines say all the time, right? And everybody travels, so everybody's a prospect, blah, 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 right? Who doesn't want to save money, blah, blah, blah. But um, I want you to think about it more like this. If you were to recommend something like Priceline or Expedia to uh, your warm market, how would you do that, right? Because more than likely, what I found is that people will refer their friends and family to something that is like a casual conversation that they're having with friends and family in a totally different way than they would their network marketing company. And I especially find this with people in travel. And it's just very interesting to me. So I want to kind of go through uh, some steps. I want to go through the process that which you're going to be taking people through from stranger, right? So they're cold lead and how you take them through the warming up process if they fit your target audience, right? So first things first, let's actually talk about the target audience because a lot of folks are not clear. Unfortunately, it's it's got a lot to do with their upline and not them. So if you find yourself in this position, it's not your fault. I'm not blaming you. I'm not judging you. I'm not talking bad about you, nor am I talking bad about your upline. Okay. But, um, a lot of times you're told everybody's a prospect. And so you don't really get a chance to stop and think about who your target audience is because again, people have preferences. And so, you know, people, you know, some people like to go to the same place every year for vacation. Uh, or holiday for all of my Brits out there. Where are my UK people out there? Um, Or you may, you know, you may have people that want to travel for a very specific purpose, right? Like a destination wedding or something like that. Um, So the question is, what kind of traveling do you want to specialize in and why? And then we need to think about what, what your target audience would look like based on that. Now, see, most people don't start off with that when they're teaching you how to build your travel company. Because yes, in the eyes of your audience, you do wanna come across just as professional as an Expedia, right? But it's just you. And so there's that. Now, a lot of people are like, yeah, I know it's just me, this is terrible. No, that's an advantage if you do it right, okay? The fact that you're you, that's the X factor. That's your best selling point. All right, so we'll talk more about that. But anyway, let's go back to your target audience. Who the hell that? So <laughs> the way you figure that out is, you know, you, you want to start thinking about some things like, why are you in travel, right? Yeah, we all want to make money in our businesses, but why travel over anything else, right? Why didn't you go with health and wellness? Why didn't you go with makeup? Why didn't you go with crypto? Like, why travel? What does it for you, right? What gets you excited and tingly from head to toe? when it comes to being a part of the travel industry? Do you feel a sense of pride and a a sense of belonging, right, to that type of tribe? Do you feel 
um, like you can get some really strong results with it? Do you want to save money yourself? And then you realize, well, I might as well turn this into a business, right? For more, even more tax write-offs. Like, what was it for you? Because more than likely, this is your target audience as well. Now, one thing I hate, <laughs> well, I don't hate it, but one thing I really don't like about how people teach, you know, how to figure out your target audience is they want you to sit down and dream up a customer avatar. I don't want you to dream up anything. I want you to stay true to yourself. So this is why I'm asking you these questions. In order to help you determine who your target audience is going to be, and in order for you to be as relatable to them as possible so that you attract people to you instead of running around chasing them down, we need to first look at the magnet itself, which is you. You are the lead magnet. You are the one that's going to be attracting people to you. So what is or was going on in your life at the time that you realize, oh my gosh, travel is the thing for me. Travel is the, is the way that I want to start a business. Travel is the vehicle that I'm going to use to take me from where I am now to where I'd like to be in my life. Okay, where were you? Um, because what I was going to say was one thing that I don't like that people teach is to create this customer avatar and pick a demographic, right? Without focusing on something that I feel is more important than the demographic. And that's the psychographic right? What are these person's beliefs and values? What are they feeling? What are they thinking, right? Psychographics. This is so very important because this is the strong pain point that you're going to connect with them about. And this is the emotional spark that's going to go off for your target audience so that they can say, oh my gosh, Val is talking to me right? If I were in a travel company, right? Um, so that's key. That's very important. Now, when it comes to that, le let's use me as an example, okay? One thing that I fell in love with as I was going through my travel training in my travel in LM was Disney. I love Disney. I've always loved Disney. I am a Disney princess, dag on it, right? And I love Disney because of just the magic and wonder of it. I love you know, that it, for me growing up, it was very, it, I felt like it spoke to me as a child. Um, it gave me permission to imagine, right? And really live in a world of make-believe, just like Mr. Rogers did for me, right? And Sesame Street and all of that. And so, um, and so with Disney, I was just like, I love that. I am a big kid deep down. I've got kids of my own that aren't so small anymore. They're 21 and 17 at the time I'm recording this or, or streaming this right now. So yeah, they're basically grown. But um, I just, I'm a very much a family person. So if you ever played Sims, if you ever played Sims, Sims 2 is my jam. Forget three and four, Sims 2 is my jam. Anybody else? <laughs> um, if you ever played me on Sims 2, make me a family Sim, Okay. <laughs> Um, I love family. I love bonding with my family. I love being close to all of my family members. Well, not every single one of them, but you know, my household family members. So I'm close with my um, younger brother. I'm close with my parents. I'm close with my spouse. I'm close with my children, you know, that whole thing. So family's everything to me. It's really important that I am around the people I love and I can protect the people I love and provide for them and in many ways, not just financially. So you know, with that being said, the Disney travel really spoke to me more than anything else, right? Especially for a family vacation. Even now, I would still take, you know, me, my husband, and my kids, even though they're 21 and 17, I would still go on like a Disney cruise with them, go to Castaway Key, you know what I'm saying? Like, that would be something that I would want to do. And so because that speaks so dear to my heart, I would more than likely make that my specialty. And see, in travel, I feel like you got to pick a, a specialty, right? One main thing that you focus on. And then, yeah, if you get some outliers, right? Because that's what a target audience is. You've got your bullseye audience, which for me would be Disney. And then you've got the rings around the bullseye. So, yeah, you'd still attract people to you that don't want to do a Disney trip. You would still attract the weddings. You would still attract the honeymoons. You would like, you get what I'm saying? So that's important. But you have to start with something very specific. 
so that you know the audience that you're speaking to, right? So for me, um, I would definitely talk a lot about family and how important family is to me and how going and traveling with my family affects our relationship. So here, this is a good starting point for you, right? Now, time to get out here on social media, time to start creating the content. And again, what's the content gonna be about? It's gonna be about family, family values, family bonding, right? And, and how travel helps with that, how travel enhances the bond that I have with my family. That's pretty much what I would talk about as a go-to topic, okay? Now here's something else. Now that I have my target audience figured out, I've got to start thinking about what main problems does my target audience have? If I don't know, there are one of two decisions I need to make. I either need to pick a new target audience since I don't know them, right? Because this is what's gonna make it difficult for you to attract people to you. You can't attract someone to you that you have absolutely nothing in common with. Right. And for those of you that are my subscribers, my fellow profitpreneurs, you know, I say this all the time. Marketing is a lot like dating. And so, you know, why would you be trying to attract somebody that you can't relate to at all? You see how that's a mismatch? So it's the same thing with travel. Get very clear on the types of folks that you want to interact with. OK, so it's either that either I need to pick a new target audience or. I need to go do some research. I need to do research on common problems that people who love to travel are having. Now, one obvious problem that people are having these days at the time that I'm live streaming is we're in the middle of a pandemic or close to the end, I hope, or something, child, I don't know, but we're in it still. And it's kind of crazy. And so people still want to be able to travel. At least we're not quarantined. Like they want to get out the house. They want to be able to do stuff but how can they do it in a safe way, right? So that would definitely be something to bring up in some content and things like that, right? If there's anything else, you're like, I don't, I don't really know what else, like what would be some common problems that people who love traveling on Disney vacations would have, right? See, a gazillion things just popped into my head just now, right? I would do content about, um, uh the dvc club right disney vacation club i would do something about the disney cruises i would do disney world parks uh answering questions or or um solving problems with getting around the parks there um disney's uh, uh disneyland out in california i would talk about the little side parks they have like the uh great adventure is that what it's called island adventure something child i don't remember <laughs> um, I would even compare them to other theme parks and talk about why I love Disney so much, right? Why Disney versus Universal? Or how do I do a Disney combo trip that helps me save money, right? I would talk about things like that. And then at the end, I would have a call to action, right? Because I don't want to just leave a person with that information and they don't know what to do with it. I'm going to tell them what to do next with it, right? Maybe I want them to connect with me and we'll have a brief consultation. I'll figure out if I'm a good fit for them as a travel agent. Do we understand each other? Do we like each other? Do we have anything in common? Because if I can understand you well, it makes it easier for me to find the right travel packages for you, right? So it's stuff like that um, that will start this whole journey. So you definitely want to be crystal clear on your target audience. Now, if you're having issues with this, you're watching me and you're like, I get what you're saying. I just don't know how to do that. Then you're going to want to come on, come on. Cause I've got um, a workshop that I do for network marketers and affiliate marketers. There's a workshop that not just I host, but it's some friends of mine who are top leaders and earners in the industry who are also professional certified coaches, just like myself. And if you're just coming across my channel for the first time, I think I forgot to mention that. I am a certified online home business coach who has been doing this for over five years now. And I've helped over 4,000 entrepreneurs, you know, get their start and or um, improve their businesses so that they can finally start getting the results that they want and get themselves into a higher profit mode a lot quicker. Okay, so there's that. 
Um, so anyway, we all get together. It's about half a dozen of us. We get together and we spend a weekend with you, not only showing you what to do, right? Because this is not just going to be a three-day lecture, but we also will sit there with you as you do it, right? Now, we used to do these things in person, which was a lot easier and faster, of course, but um, because of COVID and stuff, and we don't want people to have to worry about traveling, we do them virtually now, and we do them mm, every maybe two months, right? So we have one coming up right now, one coming up. Uh, I'm streaming this on October 11th of 2021. We've got one coming up on the 22nd, the 22nd through the 24th. Get your ticket for that. It is ridiculously cheap. The tickets in person, the tickets for you to go there in person were $2,000. And that didn't include your airfare. It didn't include your room. And it didn't include your food. And now it is a fraction of that, a small fraction of that for you to get a ticket and be able to learn from the comfort of your own home. I mean, if you're not willing to invest in a, in a workshop ticket, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Because it's so freaking cheap. It's so cheap. So anyway, I'll be sure to put that here in the um, in the description box for you to click and learn more about the workshop. So what else did I want to tell you? Okay, so yeah, if you need help with determining your target audience and getting clear on that, we go over that in detail and I can help you with that. Um, now that we have that part down, you know what your target audience is gonna be. I just gave you an example and what kind of content you're gonna start putting out here on social media. Okay, cool. Now let's go through this sales process, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen with you. Where did I join it? Where is my screen? Okay, I'm gonna share this with you here. Again, if you are a subscriber, you've probably seen this quite a few times. I want this embedded into your brain. I want you to do a mental rehearsal of this so that you know it by heart. Okay, I want you to know this better than you know your own name, because this is the key for you to be able to have success. One of the keys. It's not a lot of keys, though. It's not a lot of keys, and they're very simple keys, okay? So like I said, you need to know your target audience so that when you go out onto social media that you can start speaking to your target audience. How do you speak to your target audience? Through your content. A lot of people's content sucks, not because they're not good at speaking or posting, but because they don't know who the hell they're talking to. So they're trying to talk to everybody and all it does is confuse the audience, confuse the viewer, and they take no action whatsoever. So not only have you confused your potential customers, you have also confused yourself, child, because you don't know what the hell you're talking about either, right? So this is why we have to get crystal clear on that. Now, who is your target audience? Your target audience is people that we believe may, may, may have an interest in our business. Not certainly, but they may. There's a chance that they have an interest. And again, this is why your target audience can't be any and everybody. If it's everybody, where the hell is a target? If you go into a place to go play darts, and all they do is hand you a bunch of darts and you look around and you don't see a target to throw the darts at, where are you going to throw the darts? Exactly. <laughs> and people do this with their, um, with, their, with their own target audiences, right? So these are the folks that you believe may have an interest in your business. Now, what does that look like? Probably families in my case, right? The example I gave, probably people that are fans of Disney, um, probably people who uh, love to travel, duh, right? So things like that. Now, when I start looking on social media, one of my favorite places, favorite platforms, hands down, is Facebook. And I'll go over to Facebook because there are so many places that you can easily and quickly find your target audience in a group all in one place. So all you have to do position yourself so that you're right smack in the middle of them. So for example, with Facebook groups, Facebook groups are amazing because you can go in there as long as you're not in a spammy group, right? Where all people are doing is just posting and nobody's talking, nobody's having a conversation. There's no comment thread. There's nobody even liking the post. That's spam. But if you're in a group where they engage with one another, have conversations and it's fun and the energy's real nice, 
then yes, Facebook groups are absolutely amazing and perfect for you to get yourself in front of your target audience. Instead of having to slowly build one by one, you can plant yourself right there, give some great content, start attracting people your way. Okay. Now, before you do this, right, now that we're speaking about social media, before you go out and you start posting and all that kind of stuff, you definitely want to make sure that your profile is in order. <laughs> so um, I would recommend that you grab hold of my profile profits cheat sheet. If you haven't gotten a copy of that already, make sure that you do now because that's going to help show you how to set up your Facebook profile in a way that you do present yourself in the manner that you desire. You want people to look at you as a professional. You don't want them to think that you're some fly by night, you know, some little Joe Schmo standing on the side of the road on the corner somewhere, just selling stuff out your uh, pockets, inside pockets of your trench coat. You know what I mean? You want to be a professional. This is the way that you do it. So at first, set everything up right. Set up your profile. You don't even need a business page the way I'm going to teach you how to do it, uh, at least not yet. You, you'll start with your profile and you will market on your profile. You are not going to sell on your profile. You're going to market. And there's a big difference. I've got videos on what the difference is in previous videos. Okay. So you get out on social media, your profile looking good. Now you can start putting out posts that speak to your target audience. These are people that may have an interest in your business. How do you know how do you know whether they have an interest in your business? Well, you got to take them through the, the courting process <laughs> that we call funneling, right? So just like on a date, uh, I'm sorry, not on a date, but just like if you're going out, you're thinking about maybe meeting someone new and maybe starting to date again, right? And you go out somewhere with your friends and you happen to glance over and you see a guy over there looking all cute and he looking at you, looking all cute, right? And, um, you know, you glance over at one another. This does not mean that it is now time for the commitment right down here. These two dollar signs stand for the customer. And when a person becomes a customer, this is when they've made a commitment to you to, to make a transaction with you. And it takes a lot of trust to do that. Right. So just like if I'm up here in the target audience section. And my target audience section is the equivalent of me just glancing over at somebody like, how you doing? How you doing? Right. If that's what we're doing right now, we're not ready to get married. <laughs> we're just looking at each other. You see what I'm saying? So that's your target audience. When you're putting out posts and stuff, that's to draw them in. Right. You grab their attention and invite them into a conversation. Every single post you put out should be inviting people into a conversation with you right then and there on that post. Stop going around saying, ask me how, DM me for more. Don't, don't necessarily do it like that, right? There is a better way, and I teach that. So, you know, get on my newsletter. Go to ValerieWalton.com. Join my newsletter so you can learn this stuff, okay? Okay. Um, so now we move on to suspect. What is a suspect in the travel industry? This is somebody that is from your target audience, and now they have performed a behavior that indicates that they may be interested, right? So now we're taking it up a notch. We're going a step further. So a suspect would be someone on social media who has liked your post or commented on your post or viewed your post where you can track it, right? So for example, on a Facebook post itself, yeah, you wouldn't know if somebody saw it or not, but say Facebook stories or a Facebook um, Facebook Live, you can see who's watching you while you're on there and stuff like that. So, um, so that any of those would be considered suspects. Now, again, this is somebody whose behavior indicates they may be interested. So again, if we just looking at each other, doesn't mean it's time to go in for the kill, right? Doesn't mean it's time to go in and offer them anything. And unfortunately, a lot of people do this, right? You post something about traveling to an exotic land, Somebody clicks like, and the next thing you know, you in their inbox talking about some, hey, thanks for liking my post. So um, I'm a travel agent and I work for so-and-so company and we have an amazing comp plan and I really think you should check it out. Here's the link, bam. No, don't do that. Because that is just as creepy as if all you did was glance over across the room at someone, right? Maybe you smiled at them or whatever. And they come over and say, hey, how you doing? So you know, you're very beautiful. And I just wanted to know if you'd like to marry me later this evening. 
you'd be like, I'm sorry, what? That's crazy. Oh, oh, you crazy. No, thank you. Right? Something's wrong with you. Well, that's what people are going to think about you if you go and do the same thing to your network marketing uh, potential uh, uh, prospect, right? So a suspect is somebody that simply likes your stuff or views your stuff, right? Net or comments on it. Now, how do we get them to a lead? Because you've probably heard a lot about lead generation. Lead generation. The way that you can turn a suspect from your target audience that is on social media into a lead, right? So now that we're on step, now we can get on step four, is to offer some type of a lead magnet, right? Now, in essence, though, you yourself are the lead magnet because you're the one that they're going to connect with. You're the one that um, is attracting them to you, right? So this is so much deeper than just, oh, I got some products. Oh, I got some services. This is, they're going to connect with me. I am the gatekeeper. In order for them to get access to all the cool stuff that I have to offer them, well, they got to go through me. And this is why it is so important that you don't go around talking about, oh, my gosh, you know, my, my travel pays me, child, and you got the, your company name plastered everywhere, world ventures everywhere, vacation everywhere, IntelliTravel, Planet Marketing everywhere. Big mistake. And unfortunately, they won't tell you that because they don't care how you market. They just want you to get them some customers. Even if you got to go through a thousand people a day just to get one, they don't care. They don't care how hard you make it on yourself to grow your business. They just want the money. It's not their responsibility to teach you marketing. So if you want to get out here and do this in a way that doesn't make you want to pull all your hair out, <laughs> then you'll want to have some kind of a, a lead magnet. Now, again, I did say that you are really, in essence, you're the lead magnet. But what I'm talking about when I use that term lead magnet is some form of information that you can give away for free, but not really for free, okay? You're gonna give it away at no monetary cost to them, but they do have to give you something of value, which is their information. And I had a video that I just recently talked about, you know, how important it is for you to build your list, how important it is for you to own your own list, all that good stuff, okay? All right, cool. So now that we're on that, for you being in travel, you could do something like create a lead magnet, right? Let's say you created a, a quick one-page PDF with your three top tips for travel um, for 2022, right? Getting people prepared for the next year and what that's going to look like. That could be something that you can give away. Um, or... Uh, five secrets about Disney no one knows that is costing you money. Ooh, that would be something really good, right? And granted, this is not everything you know about your field, right? As, as a professional, as a specialist into Disney travel, but this is definitely something that you may want to share with people to grab their attention and get them on your email list. And that's the information they're going to give in exchange for the really cool secrets that you're gonna share with them. They have to enter their name and their email, possibly even their phone number. And then you are going to have it recorded somewhere in a customer relationship manager and or an autoresponder. If you do not know what these terms are, please reach out to me and let me know so I can break it down more for you or point you to some more training that I have to show you about that, okay? But your CRM stands for customer relationship manager. Autoresponder is like AWeber. MailChimp, get response, stuff like that. So again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me know. Um, let me know in the comments. Or you can message me on, on social media. That's fine too. Okay, so now this person, when they become a lead and you're halfway through the process at this point, is that they're a suspect, right? Who has not only expressed some interest, but they also have given you a means to communicate with. So this is the point that you're not only looking at each other, but this person has now come over to you and you know you guys have exchanged numbers, right? That's kind of what this is. Now you got a lead. This is somebody who's obviously interested, but we don't need to know if they're just interested. We need more information before we offer anything, right? 
So now that they're a lead, that's half the battle. Hallelujah. We're almost done with this thing. And now it's time to uh, turn them into a prospect. Now, how do you do that? Talk to them. Now, here's what's great. <laughs> this is what trips me out. When I tell people, great, now that you've got their info as a lead, go talk to them. I'll, I almost always get the question, especially from newbies, well, what do I say to them? What the hell you think? Y'all gonna go and talk about travel. Didn't you just give them some travel tips? Oh, okay. That's what you're gonna talk about. And you're going to spend more time focused on them than you. You're gonna go and talk to them about, you know, what was it, you know, that wanted you to check out my Disney secrets, right? Are you planning on traveling to Disney anytime soon? Do you, do you typically do a travel agent or do you book everything yourself? Um, how do you feel about, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about how well you can find deals, right? It's things like this that you're going to start talking to them about, but for sure, you're going to need to cover three things. Do they have a need for what you're about to offer them, right? Because you're about to offer them your services as a travel agent and or your business opportunity, all depending on how the conversation goes right? Because they may say to you, oh, I noticed that, I noticed that you're a travel agent and stuff, but I also noticed you said you show people how to get money, right? How to make money going on vacation. How do you do that? See, now you can start going into the conversation about your business opportunity. But again, I'm still not going to give them all the goods yet. I want to make sure they are qualified, right? So not only do I need to know, do they have a need for what I want to offer them? But do they also have a desire for what I want, what I want to offer them? And do they have the money? Do they have the resources and the willingness to buy? It's one thing to have the money to get the uh, travel services. It's one thing to have the money to join the business. But do, are they willing to spend the money on it? Are they willing to invest the money? Because a lot of times, you know, the, the number one objection for most marketers is the person comes back and tells them, oh, I don't have the money. And that's total bullshit, total crap. The person says that, but you know, they have a job, you know, they have some stream of income coming in that allows them to pay their bills. So they have money. But the question is, do they have money for this? Do they want to spend it on this? Because every time they spend money on something, it's a choice that they made based on what they believe is valuable, right? What they trust to be valuable. So this is why you have to have this conversation with them about those types of things, right? Now, you're not just gonna go up to them and be like, hey, yo, you need this, you need some travel, right? But you will be able to determine it through the conversations, but this is a skill set that you need to have. And if you don't feel like you have it, if you don't feel like you're at least an eight, when it comes to conversing with people and getting them to open up to you with certain pain points so you can figure out if they have the need, the desire and the resources and willingness, then you're definitely going to want to come to the workshop and you're going to want to spend more time with me. I want you to follow me on social media. I want you to reach out to me, message me, let's chat, right? Let's get on a Zoom, totally free, spend a quick 10 minutes to discuss some things that's going on with you and your business so we can fix whatever the problem is. Like, let's do it now. What do you want to wait till January 1st for? The hell, that's not magical, okay? <laughs> like, we need results right now. We got to feed this family right now, right? We got to start moving closer to our goals and our dreams right now. It's time to stop putting it off, right? So make sure that you reach out to me in some way. Um, but like I said, one of the best ways to get what you need is to get the workshop ticket. So anyway, now that you've qualified them, now you can offer. Now you see what a big difference that is? A lot of people just get on social media, look for any and everyone, doesn't matter if it's their target audience or not. So they're just on social media and as soon as they see somebody in their sites, bam, they try to make an offer. And they've skipped all these steps in between and they wonder why they're getting blocked, they're getting cussed out, <laughs> they're getting reported to Facebook. Because you skip too many steps, well, well, well. And if you want to be acknowledged and respected as a professional, you're going to have to follow the steps of a professional, okay? So 
this is the way that all of this works. So what should you be focused on each and every day to make this process even simpler for you? It's only three things you need to focus on every day. Build, engage, and sell. Do not make a list of people to go and contact. Build a, build a list of contacts. Build it up. Right? Back in the day, we had the little, well, at least the men had it. I don't know. Did, did women have it too? I don't know. Back in the day, we had the little black book, right? You added names to the little black book. You didn't just go to any and everybody that you knew, right? You only went to the people you were attracted to and they were attracted to you. Then you put the info in your little black book, right? To go and, and flirt with or spend time with or sleep with, child, I'm, I ain't judging. I don't know what the hell you're doing. So, <laughs> But that, that's the thing. And you, if you're going to be adding people to your Rolodex, right, your virtual Rolodex, which would be your CRM, well, you got to build that up. You don't just sit down and think of any Tom, Dick, and Harry you can possibly come up with and then go to them and think that they're supposed to see you like a professional. That's crazy. It's not going to work like that. Okay? So when you're building your list, Again, you're focused, this is the part where you're focused on social media and your target audience, getting some really great content out there and then, and then inviting them to become a lead, right? Because if, if you're getting your content out and people are looking, watching, liking, then you invite them to get more information from you in exchange for their personal information. Their information is valuable to you. It is the number one asset you're ever going to own in business, period, no matter what business it is that you are in. So even if you end up leaving travel and going somewhere else, that list is going to be invaluable to you, right? So make sure that you're collecting the lead, collect their information. And then, you know, once you're doing that, now you can have a conversation all about travel and what they're looking for, what they're excited about, what they need. Do you have what they need? All that kind of stuff, right? And then you can make your offer and they become a customer because they're going to say yes. And now you've just made some money. And you've also enhanced their lives with their next trip, which is going to create some amazing lasting memories and a closer bond with their family. Cool beans, right? And again, you can apply this even if you're not going to be a Disney specialist, if you're going to uh, specialize with weddings. Uh, destination weddings, if you're going to specialize in honeymoons, if you're going to specialize in just couples only retreats, period, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be a special occasion. If you're only going to focus on corporate events, right? Like whatever you want, you're going to apply the same process and you're going to apply those same steps every day. Build, engage, and sell. Build your audience up by putting out content that attracts your target audience to you offering something for free in exchange for their email. That's how you build your audience and build your list. Difference between the two, your audience are the people that you have on that social media platform. Your list are the people that are on your email list. You're, you will be building both doing those same steps of putting out the content and finding people in groups and conversing with them. It's all gonna work together to get you both accomplished. And then you're gonna engage with that audience. You're going to engage with that list as well. You're going to have more conversations, deeper conversations, again, to do the qualifying part of your process. Learning, do they have a need? Do they have the desire? Do they have the resources to buy? If so, now we can move on to the third and final step. So after you've built, after you've engaged, now you can sell to your audience because now you will be, uh, the door will be open for you to make the offer, right? with no question that they're going to say yes, because now you're not just guessing. Now you know, because you've got all your information straight from the person, straight from the prospect. They've told you what they want. It's like going to a McDonald's drive-thru, right? If I go to a McDonald's drive-thru and I want a quarter pound of a cheese meal, they're not going to say, oh, no, 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 you don't want that. We're going to sell you a salad. Pull around to the front, please. They're not going to do that. McDonald's is not going to convince me to buy what they want me to get. They're just going to take my order. You need to do that with your prospects. What do they want? What order are they going to place? Can you provide that? Can you facilitate that? If so, sell it to them. And see, this is why we can't go out to people and go tell them how important it is for them to travel. 
in the middle of a pandemic, right? You can't do that. You want to, instead of trying to educate and convince people, you want to go to the people that are already convinced, the people who already have their mind made up and they know that they love to travel regardless of what else is going on in the world, right? Go to those folks. That's your target audience. It makes it so much easier for you to be able to start building your list, engaging with that list, selling to the list and making some money, child, so you're a profitpreneur. Boom. See? All right, so hopefully that has been able to help. I'm just gonna double check, see if there's any questions in here. Doesn't look like it. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and go. And I actually have a really cool um, course coming out uh, that I'm gonna be offering very soon. And just in time for us to close the new year, uh, for us to close this year and embrace the new year. So you're gonna love this. It's actually the 90 day five figure uh, challenge. Okay. You want to start hitting five figures a month. I have found a way to make that happen for you by offering you this course. Um, I collabed with a good friend of mine. His name is Mark Harbert. He, you may also find him on YouTube. And he has provided me with some really amazing tips, not only that I've applied for my own self, but also that you can now take and apply. And I'm going to offer that to you at a really low discounted price just for you being uh, a follower on YouTube. So you'll get a chance to check it out, but you have to get on my newsletter. Um, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to, uh, I want you to put the number 90, right? Put the number 90 here in the, in the chat so I know that it's you and then get on my newsletter and I'll be sure to get that information out to you, okay? All right, cool. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this past hour. I think we've covered pretty much all the basics. And again, like I said, if you want to go a little deeper into this whole thing and you want my help with step by step what to do, I mean, hell, after 4,000 entrepreneurs that I've helped, I think I know what to do <laughs> and I can totally help you. So if you would like that help, if you would like that type of guidance, then reach out to me and let me know. And we'll either see if we can get our hands on a workshop ticket for you or we will have some kind of a conversation where you can get something out of it, right? I never like to leave people with nothing. So anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Totally appreciate you. And I will see you back here tomorrow live at five.